Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and today I'm gonna to talk about how to transplant, or my tips for transplanting your winter sown seedlings. So if this is your first time hearing about winter sowing, it's basically a way of growing uh, seedlings outdoors and things like milk jugs instead of indoors under grow lights. And transplanting seedlings that you grow in milk jugs is a little different than uh, the seedlings that you grow indoors on a grow lights or even buy from a big box store in that when you get them, uh, when you grow them indoors or you get them from a big box store, the roots are usually fully developed all the way around the cell of whatever plant you're transplanting, right? And <clears throat> what that means is it's pretty easy just to pop the seedlings out and put them in the ground and with winter sown plants, uh, the roots can get a little bit intertwined. It's easy to separate them if you've done one seed per hole, as I recommended. But even if you haven't, it's still relatively easy to separate them and the plants will still do okay. So I'm just here to show you sort of my tips and tricks for doing that. Um, and a, a couple best practices, first of all. <clears throat> so for transplanting seedlings, you want to have opened the jugs up at least a day in advance. Sometimes the same day is okay for hardier things like kale, but uh, you want at least a day in advance, maybe two days in advance, just for them to get used to being in the air directly and having direct sun. Also, one tip is if your seedlings are super close together in the jug, to water the container. Once you've opened the lid and given them a day or two, to right before you go to transplant, to water the container. Now my seedlings got really wet yesterday because it rained, so I don't need to water them, but I thought I'd mention that tip as well. Now some basic practices is, first of all, obviously, you need to figure out where you're gonna put the seedlings. <laughs> and that's, that's always a point of consternation for me. And then second of all, you need to clear the space set it up, get rid of weeds, amend it. If you're using a raised container or a raised bed or a container to get all your things together, you want the soil and everything to be as ready as possible for transplanting. Um, and even um, having like the holes marked out of where you're gonna put them can help. Another thing is if you can transplant on a cloudy day, that's preferable. But if you can't, you want to try to protect the seedlings roots when you take them out of the container. And this is true regardless of whether you grow them indoors, buy them from a big box store, or, or um, grow them via uh, winter sowing, because the roots really don't like being exposed to direct sunlight. So the extent to which you can protect those roots from the sun by either shading the spot you're gonna um, <clears throat> plant them in with your body or with a bag, or as you can see, the sun's coming and going today or you can just wait till a cloudy day, but you can plant them on a sunny day. Obviously today it's back and forth for me. <laughs> As for timing, well, for my cool weather vegetables, for the ones that can handle a frost, I tend to plant after I feel like I've passed the last big threat of a deep freeze. So a deep freeze here is, uh, is, is 28 degrees or lower. Most frost hardy plants can handle 30, 28 to 32 degrees. Some can handle below 28 degrees, but as a general rule, um, you wanna plant them after those hard frosts. But for my area in zone 7A, um, that's mid-March is usually about when I, usually about when I transplant. Uh, and this is actually April when I'm transplanting most of them because we had a really deep freeze last week. Um, and I thought, well, <laughs> the plants will be healthier if I just give them a little more you know another week before I transplant and you want to watch the nighttime temperatures in the early spring once you have transplanted uh, your seedlings whether it's um, your frost hardy or other seedlings because you may need to cover them at night as for summer vegetables flowers and herbs uh, I tend to wait until after my average last frost date but for me, I have found that the locals, especially my first year in gardening, they told me that really, uh, so for Maryland zone 7A, my average last frost date is like mid-April, but most people in this area say to wait until after Mother's Day, which is like early May to mid-May uh, to transplant because you still get a good number of frosts. So I followed that rule. But as a general guideline, uh, you want to try to wait until the nighttime temperature temperatures are generally in the 50s or higher consistently uh, for your summer vegetables. That's, you know, there's no guarantee there won't be a frost um, after that, but it does sort of getting it to that level where you're consistently seeing the past few days, the next several days, 
uh, forecast and, and having been in the 50s or higher at night, you're reducing your risk of a frost that will, uh, will kill your plants. But you can cover them with frost cloths and other things at, if there is a, is, is, is a frost anyway. And then um, you need to figure out how to space the plants. So, so for example, this Merlot lettuce, that's, you can kind of see it over here, that's the one back behind that lid. <laughs> There's the Merlot lettuce. And for the Merlot lettuce, I want it to be spaced, you want it to be spaced six inches apart. Oh, hi airplane. <laughs> um, and you don't really need to worry about rows, but you do want it to be spaced about six inches apart. Um, and Jess from Roots and Refuge says, you know, she tends to leave around that, the amount of inches recommended around the entire plant. Now, if for lettuce in particular, if you're growing it just to take the leaves and you want baby greens, um, then you don't have to give it six inches. You can do like three or four, or even just scatter the seeds and just bulk plant them. But in my case, I want to, buy, I want to harvest the mature leaves for the leaf vegetable. All right, now let me show you what we're working with. So uh, in this bed, we're gonna be planting lettuces, um, some onions, some, I think these are red bunching onions. I've already transplanted some white bunching onions. I don't know if you can see them right down here, along this area here. <laughs> I did that yesterday. They can be, it says half an inch apart. I, I've never grown onions before, so it's a new experience for me this year. Um, but it says half an inch apart, so I'm, I put them real close together. And then for the lettuce, yeah, the lettuces, and then I have some Chinese mustard under the hoop. I'm gonna put bridal tool over these hoops and secure them down with sticks or bamboo or something to help hold the edges down. And that's to keep the uh, cabbage moth from laying her eggs and us having cabbage worms on our brassicas. That's kales, cabbage, lettuce, um, even mustard. Uh, also, I just, I'm so excited to show you. I have rigged, we'll see how well it works, but it lasted the night, so I feel like uh, it's a success so far. Let me show you. Here it is. I have rigged a hoop house for bridal tool to keep the butterfly, uh, the cabbage moth off of my plants. And um, I'll show you a clip of, of what I did in a second. But essentially these are, this is plastic tubing I got from Home Depot like a year or two ago to do this. It's really malleable. It's not super strong, so you can't do anything real heavy on here. The bridal tool is so light that it works perfectly for this. Um, and then I put a, a rod of bamboo along and secured it with zip ties. Voila! <laughs> along just to help keep the bridal tool up. Uh, and then for the base here, on the base I did um, there's rebar on the end ones, and then I broke six foot bamboo poles in half and stuck them in the ground, so they're three feet tall each, or probably two feet. And I put the uh, poles over that. So, so far so good, and I'm just securing the bottom with stones or other little things. Um, I may come up with a better solution to secure the bottom, but this will keep, theoretically, this will help protect them from um, being ravaged by cabbage butterfly, cabbage moths. All right, now so let's get to transplanting some things. I got this uh, little mat. This is supposed to be a, this mat next to the thing is supposed to be a beach mat, but uh, I use it for my gardening because it's nice and comfortable. Anyway, okay. Ooh, it's getting warm enough to take off the jacket. Woohoo! We're gonna do the Merlot lettuce since I just talked about it. Now, this is one of the reasons that I do one seed per hole is because it's much easier to separate. I will show you when I do the onions, uh, which I just kind of scattered them, the seeds, and they're much closer together. Some are next to each other. So I will show you how to separate them when they're close together. But the principles are about the same for each. There's something I can use for a shadow. I'm gonna put this bag here on this corner to create a shadow because uh, it's a sunny day and I want these seedlings to have the least amount of sun exposure possible. I'm gonna flip it in the sun so you can see it, but basically you wanna put your hand in between the seedlings 
and you just want to gem gently pop it. Look at that gorgeous root structure at the bottom. Oh, all right. Now into the shade in a second here. Now you can see it's naturally falling apart in a certain way, and that's fine. Let's take the tag out. You don't want to lose the tag. Put that in the shadow. Put that in the shade. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to do it four from the end, and uh, I'm going to start it about here. A couple. Let's see about about five from the end. I worry less about the ends because they can outspace, their leaves can go past the end. Five, so it's this whole thing. So I can go to here. And I don't want it to be too close to the onions. All right, so we'll just do four of them to start with and then I'll probably do another row here of these guys. Um, the main idea is to make sure each plant gets as much of its original root system as possible. So taken back, and I really hate doing this in the sun, but lettuce is okay. It's not as fragile as some other plants. Uh, so here we have on the end, <laughs> this lettuce plant just wants to come out. So I try not to control the bottom. I just kind of let it come out as it wants to see that gorgeous root structure there. So I want to pop that in the hole. Now, if you're, if you're, if your soil isn't wet, this is soaking, not soaking wet. This is quite damp from yesterday, we got heavy rain. So I'm not pre-watering the hole. I will water them after I transplant them. But you just wanna put them in the hole. Look how easy that is. When you have, do one seed per hole, I mean, just look at that, how easy that comes apart. Just so easy. And I should be wearing gloves, but this, this soil right here is stuff I brought from my other garden. So I know it's not full of glass and things like that. This was literally the, the soil with a little amendment. This was little, that's gorgeous. This is literally the soil that I used in my backyard for my shade lettuce beds. Now this looks really far apart to me. I don't know. It's hard for me not to put them all next to each other, but I'm gonna try to be disciplined here. All right, where's our other hole? I think it was right here. Let's see. Yeah, it was right here. I kind of covered it up with these guys. And I'm gonna do one more. And really you just, like that, just comes right apart very easily. You don't have to be panicky. If you lose some of the root system, that's fine. Thing. All right, so I already kind of have a row set up here, so I'm just gonna try to do about six inches. Now, I'm gonna put these under the shade. Now, if it's a super hot day, having them in the shade is more important. Today is a nice crisp day, and I don't think the sun's gonna be as sort of distressful to them, but it's still generally a good practice. Now I'm breaking my rule of having, <laughs> of having the hole prepped, but this is an easy one. These are easy to plant. All right, now this one is a little intertwined with the others, but not too bad. I do like to press it down a little so that it gets some nice, and just kind of let her separate and do her thing so that it gets some nice sort of support at the base. And after I water them, I sort of help try to make them sit upright as well. All right, I think we can fit in another couple here at the end. So let's see. Now these are these three are pretty close together not super close but i'm literally kind of just letting the plant you can wiggle it back and forth like this you're still going to get most of the root system get my microphone cord out of the way here we don't need you in the camera image and these two are relatively close to each other so i just kind of kind of jostle them back and forth which helps and you can dip them if they really are tangled, you can dip them in uh, lukewarm water and literally they'll come apart like butter, like room temperature butter. All right, so we have one extra, doesn't make a pretty row, but uh, I wanna plant it, so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> it's okay. 
when I put seeds in, I don't know how many will sprout and I just hate wasting seeds. Now I can, I can give some of these away. I'm going to a community, my local uh, gardening group is having a meeting today. So I'm gonna give some seedlings to them, but I do love Merlot lettuce. It's gorgeous in salads. I think uh, I'm gonna do a row of red bunching onions down here and I'll show you right now how I do that. Red bunching onions, white bunching onions, they don't need a lot of space. Okay, let me show you this. First thing first, move the tag. Now I'm not gonna fit these all here. I'm gonna plant them throughout the rest of my garden beds, but you can at least see some of what I'm doing and I can put the rest of this back in. Look, there's some that have even tried growing along the bottom. Look at that. <laughs> Hello, mister, we will keep you too. All right. So here we have really densely packed. I'm gonna try to find a couple near the edge that are real close together. Maybe this set right here. So I'm just putting my thumb right in the spot. And I'm trying to keep, because I wanna put this back in the container, I'm trying to keep as much of the integrity of the rest of it as possible. So I'm kind of sticking my thumb in here and trying to pull it without hurting anybody. Come on. You can all come together, I promise. We'll all be friends. Just kind of jiggle it. Don't force it unless you need to. Kind of help the plant. Mm, I can smell onion. <laughs> I must be losing some of the roots here. Now the roots are slightly tangled and that's okay. I wanna get as much of your root ball and root system as I can, mister. There we go. All right, I'm gonna put this back in here right now. Except you, you appear to want to come up too. Put that all back in. Oh, oh, that's not very well done. Oh, Esther, you could have done a better job at that. No, come on. Well, I'm about to transplant them, so I'm not going to be too worried about it. So let's take the uh, let's take the ones that had taken their own initiative of growing in the uh, <laughs> side of the pot. It's crazy. They will, seeds, seeds have such a will to live. They will grow anywhere they can. Now I should be shading these. So I'm gonna put them in the shadow of my hat over here. I, uh, I, I've said I'm new at, gar at uh, onions, but to fit them in this tiny hole, I kinda, I don't know if this is a bad idea or not, but I kinda twist them, twirl them, so that the roots kind of all, oh, I missed one. So the roots kind of all take a shape and fit into the hole together. No idea if that's a good idea or not, but it seems to work pretty well with the exception of this one, which is not cooperating with me. Okay. Next, who's next? Let's see who's next. Oh, you got some, you got some soil attached to your butt. All right, there you go. You get to go in. Don't try to stick out here, roots. Now you can't, you gotta stay. Yeah, there you go. Cooperate with me, little plant. You want to live. You want to live. I have no idea whose voice that is. Oh, come on. Get in the hole. Another thing to make sure of when you're transplanting is to keep the roots from getting dry. Now, in this case, we're transplanting these guys real fast. So and I probably could be putting them closer together than I am even, but we're transplanting these guys real fast. So I'm not worried about their roots drying out, but I would normally try to keep these packed in the potting mix that they came in uh, right until I transplant them or keep the potting mix with it as I put them in the, as I transplant them. Now see how, but look how easily they come apart. Now, getting roots apart is more difficult the longer the plant is in the container and all gets intertwined. And especially with summer vegetables, you'll find you're gonna lose some of the roots transplanting them, but don't panic. As long as they have enough, as long as they have enough to start getting nutrients pretty quickly, uh, it, you know, the ones that lose a lot of root system, it'll take them a little bit longer to bounce back, but they will bounce back. They will be fine. Uh-huh. Oh, look how nicely this worked out. This took care of most of this row. I might still put in a few more later on, but I'm probably just gonna do the edge of the rows, this whole bed, just do onions around the edges. Just tuck them in. All right, it's time to water everybody. And 
the Merlot lettuce. Now, one thing to note is all seedlings have a little bit of shock when you transplant them and they all look a tiny bit wilty. Some look worse than others when you transplant them and you just can't panic. They will come back. Now, if you don't see them coming bouncing back within four days, five days, then you might want to, you know, try to figure out other options. Maybe water them some more, give them some nutrients, do something else. Um, but, you know, within, within a week, they should be all bounced back. Now, these lettuce is pretty hardy, so I don't think we're actually going to have to have much transplant shock. All right. It's time to water these guys and put my shoes back on. <laughs> Now I don't have a hose out here because I, uh, yeah, this garden I have to pump my water from the local creek, which I haven't got the full setup for yet. I've got most of the parts. So right now I'm just bringing water from home in uh, the milk jugs that I haven't used uh, for winter sowing yet. I also have some six gallon milk water jugs that I I realized very recently that six gallons is way too heavy for me to carry. So I can fill it up to about four gallons without really, you know, stressing my shoulder. Um, and what I'll do is I actually fill up the six gallon things with the milk jugs of water, with the one gallon things of water, as I come to the garden. And that way I have a couple. I'm not worried about the fact the lettuce is tipped over at the moment. I'm about to right side everybody. Okay, that was about a gallon and a half that went on these guys. Not that it matters a whole lot, but I like to just upright them just because they're probably upright themselves. But for me, it look, just looks better when I upright them a little bit. Just give them a little bit of ability to look at the sun and not have to make out with the dirt. As much as they want to eat the dirt or the moist contents in it. These onions try to help you out a little bit. The onions didn't get affected quite as bad. Oh, that one got uprooted a tiny bit. Hmm, let's cover you back up. All right, good. Ta da! <laughs> and now I thought I'd show you how the garden looks in the evening after I've done a bunch of transplanting. My arugula survived the 20 degree night temperatures when the cover I put over them blew off and I was so grateful. And the beets are starting to emerge. All right, now you should have some sense of what you need to do for transplanting your seedlings. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Dirty hands! <laughs> um, please hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed so as I continue gardening, I can share my updates with you and you won't miss out on any. All right, see you next time. <laughs>